coming together a bit. This is a, a rough breakdown of our sort of current um, balance in investor um, asset allocation. We've got about 20% corporate bonds gilts, but of that, 20%, we would say very, very little in um, uh, corporate bonds, sorry, in gilts, maybe corporate bonds, a little bit in hedge, 55% equity. We've introduced property. Um, We'll do it. Um, we'll do this, the, the, the property introduction for people over a period of time. Probably doesn't matter. We did it three months ago, um, six months ago. We do it over the next six months dramatically. But we just think again, long term, it looks really good. Commodities is one thing that we have. Uh, we are encouraging people to hold, and specifically gold, um, gold funds. Um, that just gives you a sort of an idea of that. I mean, you tailor it to, to each individual risk profile, um, and just. As an example, within equities, you know, we're probably holding no more than 20% 20, 20, 20 of the bit in, in UK equities at the moment, um, purely because we think there's, there's better value elsewhere. So those of you that have held European funds will know that we um, advised to sell out European funds um, last week, uh, earlier this week, end of last week, um, purely as a precautionary measure um, because of what's happening in, in, in Eurozone at the moment. Um, and, and we do still like you know, Far East emerging markets. Um, this is a slide that, that shows the different um, forms of uh, different asset classes over the last three years. So if you bought the FTSE 100, you'd be looking here at about a, a three years ago, you'd have lost about 8% of your money over a three year period, but you bought the gold fund that uh, Matt's talking about, you'd be about 70 or percent up, and some of you hold that fund. In the so it's about 80% differential. Cash, about 7% up over a three year period. Corporate bonds average, about 7% up over that period of time. But corporate bonds, as we know, have, have, have a massive gain in corporate bond terms for the last 18 months or so. What this demonstrates to me is that you should never have all your eggs in one basket in a, in, a, in a portfolio, and you do need to change, move, move things around a bit. I think that the um, Gold thing is uh, natural resources um, as a story is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and one of the things that we do is try to look at um, what investments we feel are going to work moving forward. And obviously, there's the traditional stuff. Um, and fun themes, um, those of you who have seen me in the last few months will hear me talk about agriculture as a, as a, as a theme. Um, you know, we believe that that's, that's one area that, that's going to be very interesting. Um, so, uh, the figures suggest that there's um, going to be two and a half billion more mouths to feed in the uh, world by 2050. Um, with the um, and in the emerging economies, as um, they get richer, there has been a much greater uh, uh, um, level of consumption of protein, so meat. So we've we've got to um, provide more livestock. That means more fertilizer for the crops, more uh, farm machinery, etc. Um, and agriculture, although it's a high risk area at the moment, because there's probably about 500 stocks worldwide you can choose from, we definitely think it's a, it's a theme. Again, not necessarily to go into it straight away, but something that we would be um, encouraging people to hold in portfolios um, over a period of time. Emerging economies we, 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 we've touched on, which is basically um, the emerging markets, Far East, not Japan. Um, we disappointed about for 20 years in a row now, so um, and I still feel the same. Everyone's talking about Japan, so possible less to go. I just can't bear myself to to to, um, to put the fresh money here. Every time I've done it in the last 20 years, it's just gone down like a stone. Um, so um, we 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 we're basically the emerging market funds over the last year. Average emerging market fund is up 50 percent. Could absolutely be that it's running out of steam that that market. That's what some people are saying. We've seen China off a bit recently. <coughs> off a bit recently. But for the long term, this is what Matt's talking about as well. I'm not worried too much about what's happening over the next month or so. I am worried about what's happening over the next three, five, ten years. And that is definitely a market we're going to con continue to support. Um, the other thing is that we've held, um, if you look at UK equities, most of the UK equity funds we hold mainly been large cap funds, um, which have been protected or better protected through um, the last three years or so. But at some point, we will start to make um, a move into small cap um, and, um, and, and try to uh, drive some um, return out of that as well. So those are the sorts of things I'm doing really quickly. Um, 
things that we're, that we're looking at at the moment and we'll try to um, um, put into people's portfolios. Um, Thermals of Carrington, very, very quickly, one of the things that we're doing is um, I've agreed um, for a uh, uh, discretionary fund manager to join us um, who's going to help us off portfolios um, and that will hopefully be um, um, dealt with in the next month or so. Um, interestingly enough, he sent me no case to know how many portfolios we've got in cash because he's, he was interested in um, buying some stuff. So, Mark, what you were saying just then, um, that, that um, this guy was on to me yesterday just, just asking how many clients held cash um, because I was saying to him, okay, we're, we're in a bit of turmoil at the moment, price. Should we get out now? What should we do? Should we get moving more to cash? He was saying, actually, how much you got cash at the moment? So I think we're going to have a conversation over the next few days about um, what to do at the end of the day, so the clients whether they take care yeah, or advice to move back into something or not. Um, so that's hopefully a really good, good uh, development for us. Um, and um, other than that, the big thing for us at the moment is the retail distribution review uh, that some of you have heard about, which basically um, means that uh, we're moving towards a um, fee-based service um, directed by the Financial Services Authority. We have no choice, um, and we're going to be sending more details out about that over the next month or so. Um, but hopefully there's something in there for, for us. Um, Where we have gone over time. Sorry, Sorry about that. If there's any more questions, I need to get off this. Before you can please just make a dash for it. Uh, thanks very much, Matt, for, for, for checking this morning. Um, and um, <coughs> otherwise, if you want to fire questions away, fire away, we'll, we'll hang around. So thanks very much indeed. Feel free to get a fresh take.